My name is Sully Breaks and welcome to Seven Figures, a podcast where we talk about business, financial literacy and what it takes to build a million pound empire or business. Um, today I have Jamal Edwards, founder and CEO of SBTV, which is essentially one of the pioneers in the revolution of digital music and independent artistry. And not only that, he's also responsible for breaking some of the biggest talent to ever come out of the UK. And that's that's no word of a lie, that's literally, you know what I mean? I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Ed Sheeran. The first time he really got a big look was on SBTV. So um, it's a pleasure. I just want to introduce you here today, my bro. Thank you. What's good, man? Nice one, man. Yeah, all good, man. Just... Uh at the moment, just doing like lots of different um, community projects. So I've just been like deep in that. Yeah. yeah so yeah, been want to get back on producing the music content again. But um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of a lot of uh, um, community stuff at the moment. I heard you directed Ed's new video though. Yeah, so yeah, I saw yeah. Your well, name I put it together. Yeah, with yeah. Dave and Paolo Londra, and I've done a Chelsea FC directed that one. So like, oh, I'm doing like bits and bobs. Um, like special projects that I really want to get involved with, and yeah, so like yeah, I'm not I'm not consistently making content as I used to. Yeah, yeah. But like I want to get back into making content again, like F64. Bring Whoa, back. don't 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 bring back yeah, their yeah, memories, yeah, boy. Yeah, change the game so with I wanna, that. I want to do all that again. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but it's it's the game's changed now. Like, the, yeah. So the game's changed. Like how before how it was. So it's just like you have to adapt and and change with it. I guess. Yeah, and I hear yeah. that I think every entrepreneur, any business goes through that evolution stage, you know what I mean? And we can get back to talk about all your community projects and everything you built. So um, let's start from the jump in it, you know what I mean? I see you as entrepreneur, you know what I mean? Um, I think a lot of people respect you as entrepreneur. You built one of the biggest, most influential music platforms. We're not just talking in the digital space, but music platforms for up and coming artists. So... How did it start? Like from the get go, what was your first? I don't know if you see yourself, if you saw yourself as an entrepreneur from the start, but how did it start? Early days, what was your first example of like entrepreneurship? What's your relationship with entrepreneurship? Talk um, to me. Yeah, so I think in school it wasn't really like if you say you want to be an entrepreneur, you, you it wasn't like oh yeah you could be an entrepreneur because I I didn't really see anyone that I could relate to until I found out I think about Richard Branson via my mum because she worked for Virgin. Uh, and then that's when I started researching a bit more about entrepreneurship. But before, like, I used to do, like, silly things like, like, get loads of food and sweets and sell it. Or, like, I used to cook, like, fried dumplings and then sell them for a pound on the estate. Like, little things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, little things like that, sort of, like, that's a little bit of an entrepreneur sort of mindset. But I remember that like, there was this research of like are people born entrepreneurs or do you become entrepreneurs? And our parents weren't entrepreneurs. I don't really have any entrepreneurs in my family. So I think like I learned it. Whereas someone else like, again, mentioned Richard Branson, Sam Branson, his son, like he's now gone into, on he's an entrepreneur. If um, he didn't do something that would be interesting as well. Um, if he didn't do something involving like business that would be interesting as well. But yeah, I, in the early days, it was just mainly like, things like selling sweets and, and fried dumplings. And then like when I became a little bit older, I, I changed it more into doing music, but I never realized I had a business until um, I I could leave jo my job at Top Man, because that's what I used to work, yeah. do that all the time and then put my money back into equipment and all that sort of stuff. And then um, when, I, when I was able to leave that, then I was able to make a business and then start employing people, so, yeah. Cool, so that's, so, so that's dope. What I'm getting, yeah, and for a lot of people I've spoke to, yeah, it seems like everybody that's um, gone into doing an entrepreneurial endeavor, most of them started at the school age, like literally selling sweets. A lot of people were like, yeah, I used to sell sweets. And that's like a common thread. Like, but you took it another level. Obviously, man was doing dumplings, you know. And yeah, the dumplings. <laughs> I remember there was, a, there was a guy called Deepak, yeah, in my school. He, he had it on smash for the sweets. Yeah. Like when I realized now what I read, when, back in the day, I was thinking, yeah, man pay like 30p for like a Twix or like, whatever for the and because it was like banned sweets in school we used to do it on a slide oh be, them ones I know it used to be mashing peas when I look back to it but like I realised after he was going like macro and getting bulk and then selling it oh them so, ones yeah like, <laughs> I didn't realise when he was doing it in school we was just guessed like we was getting sweets in school um, but he proper smashed it um, but yeah like it was yeah that's 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 on sort of the early days but yeah it was like 15, well 15 was on sort of business so it was way before like when I before I was 15 cool so yeah. 
So after that, yeah, so you go from selling sweets, you're thinking, right, I've got this entrepreneurial spirit, yeah? Mm. So then was the next big endeavour, like, SBTV, that's it? Was that the next thing you did? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah, that was the next thing, that was the next thing I did. And I did, and I'm still doing it. Um, and there's that other little businesses that I've been involved in and whatnot. But yeah, that was the main sort of big one that, that I first started. So let's talk about SBTV. Let's talk about like conceptually, how did how did it start? And let's talk through the journey, like do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, obviously there's like the Risky Rose, Practice Hours, Lord of the Mics. But I remember going online, there was seeing nothing like, original content it was either the content i was ripped off the dvds or um nothing so i was like all right cool i'm gonna start filming videos and i think like i started off mainly in west london first filming the local people in my area and then uploading it to youtube and then that's where i realized the the want for it because yeah. there was a gap in the market smoky bars them time in there. Yeah, yeah 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 like, i was still like mc and then so like i was <laughs> um filming the videos uploading it and then just promoting it around my area and then when i realized i needed to get into other areas i started reaching out to other people from other areas to get them on because then it helped me spread it a little bit further as well at right, course cool. you know because they're talking i don't want to cut you off because they're talking about business and i feel like i want people to get like fundamental principles of how to build this thing mm -hmm. so what networks were you able to take advantage of like structurally like what tools so obviously like first of all how did you buy the camera do you get what i'm saying where did you get the piece to do that yeah. second of all like how did you market you know like the little things that you did that you remember doing and then who helped you to like kind of like make it grow so the camera i got as a gift from my parents okay um like christmas christmas a birthday gift why did you get a camera out of all things i don't know because i think i asked for it like because i had a, I had a phone the nec 20 pound swivel camera phone that, yeah that, that one. <laughs> And I used to make silly videos on that. And I was just, I need to have better quality. So I think that, yeah, I didn't ask for anything else except for a camera. So I was like, all right, cool. I got it because it was quite expensive. Um, I think I was like my own pre only present. And then that's when, um, for the tapes and all that, that's when I started to get a job in Top Man and like for oh. a light. So I was making money like that. And then like, like washing my auntie's bathroom, getting a little 20 pound there. Like just doing like little things, like trying to do car wash on the estate. Um, you a car wash on that stage. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I used to used to do loads of used to do and like I don't know. Oh man, I used to find pennies and try to get it to pounds, all that sort of <laughs> stuff. Um, but yeah, in it, it was um, a gift, and then I was able to work in Top Man to provide mm. more like money to Income. improve my equip uh, equipment. So what would you say? What was and the marketing? You said the marketing. Yeah, go so on. The marketing mm. was um, word of mouth. Like, I think that was the best tool in the early days because if you had a friend that told you to watch something, you're going to watch it more than 100%. me doing adverts. I didn't have money for adverts either. So it was, um, like, a lot of, like, going into school, changing people's um, homepage to SBTV, oh. little things like that. Just, like, what else was it? Um, I used to create, like, leaflets. I use a lot of my school's infrastructure, like, print off bare stuff give it to oh, everyone them. Um, and yeah a lot of it was was word of mouth just telling people yo check out SPTV like yeah I, th I think that's interesting because a lot of young people I always say to them like if you're in school or uni yeah, you have almost most of the facilities you need around you in it yeah. so I always say take advantage of that bruv because in the real world you have to pay for printing you have to pay for like internet, like, yeah, internet. You, have, you understand you have to pay for lighting you have to you know if you're in uni you can get a camera and all that kind of stuff yeah so definitely if, so if we're talking like in a business sense what so what would you like if I talk to someone here, I'd be like, yo, what's your startup cost? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. what, what would you say your startup cost for SBTV was? Like, how much, like, if someone says, I want to start this back in the day, how much peas do you think you put into it at the start to make it, like, happen? Uh, does that include the price of the gift? Um, yeah, let's include that just, just, right, just so, for the sake of, like... Um, five... 500 to 750 pound. 500 And you was how old at the time? 16, 17. 16, yeah. 18, yeah, roughly. That was like my camera, tapes, light, travel. Ish, yeah. That's I think maybe, maybe a grand. Maybe a grand. Like, I think, like 500 to a grand, I think. Yeah. Like, I think. I've never really thought of that. 
You don't but ever look back. The most bulk of it was um, the camera. The camera, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was the most expensive. Don't you ever look back and look at everything and be like, right, I built this whole thing with just a grand. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but I didn't. <laughs> no, but I, the, I wish I could be more specific and know for a fact. I'm thinking that's roughly where it is. But yeah, if, it, if, it, if it's roughly, then I think, yeah, that's like mad to um, be able to like, I've been able to like scale it up, I guess. Yeah. But I get lost. I get lost. I, I don't really think about that. Like, I always think, I always... I always think the power of now. Yeah. Like, and I don't really appreciate, like, I do the past every now and then, but I don't think about it a lot. Like, I put something up yesterday of the Google Chrome advert, which came out, like, eight years ago. Oh, to, yeah, to I remember day. that. That and, was... Yeah, so, like, that. And then just the influx of people saying, like, this changed my life. I was in school when I watched this. This was on TV everywhere. I had dreams of being on SB when I saw this. Like, hundreds of comments that I've got from people then it makes me, then I reminisce and like, yeah. rah, like it had that effect. But other than that, I don't really, and people say it's important to like reflect, but I'm so in the power of now and doing things now. I try not to think about the past and the future because yeah. it sometimes messes me up more and I don't forget what's going on now. I, I, I forget what's going on now. That's that Eckhart toll, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, hear yeah. That. I heard that fully, man. So that Google Chrome advert, for those of you who ain't seen it, that was game changing because that was like Google publicizing like how to build something online and you were like the face of it. I remember yeah. that and it showed you when you put, mum, I got a camera. Yeah, then you start yeah, yeah. it shows the views and all that kind of, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was a mad moment. Um, I, was, I was 19, 20 when that happened. And yeah, that was a transformational, um, that was a transformational thing because like, it was Lady Gaga and Justin Bieber in... America and Canada, America, Canada, and I was used for like UK, so it was just like a, like to get like one of the biggest brands in the world co-signing your thing, it was mad, like it was mad, yeah. So let's talk about that two year time period, you started at 17, 16, whatever, and then you're on the Google advert, do you understand what I'm saying? As a business at this point, had SBTV involved, evolved into the business it was? Yeah, 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 I'd been, I'd been employing people, um, c c c where I could like it wasn't like fully fledged let me not cut you off Jamal bro but I think this is so important because I feel like a lot of people don't understand the structure of how SBTV worked in early days because mm -hmm. a lot of people are like oh if I want to make a video and that's all you tweet once if someone was like if I want to make a video I'm going to holler at the director the director will pay and then Jamal's going to get all that peas in it mm -hmm. but I remember you saying that oh the, the, the peas is for the director yeah. this is how just, so could you break that down just so people know early days how that structure and your employment thing was working uh oh how how your employment structure was working early early days when you oh so like if we do like work with a brand the yeah. the we'd get paid for that and then I'd pay for the cameraman and the editor and it wasn't the best um it wasn't the best money but it everyone that was I managed to keep everyone motivated about the dream and like one day you will get paid do you know what I'm saying properly so like any little money I make I used to like share it or whatever. And some some jobs we didn't get paid and we still did it. Yeah. So it was like I'm very thankful for my early SB team, like that was rolling with me. Who was the early team? Like who was the early team? And oh, I don't want to miss any names, yeah, but I heard um, that. like Liam, Tutor, like and the thing with everyone that's like everyone that has been on the team, they've gone on to do great things. Like yeah. so, like Liam's been doing like Super Academy and with uh, B J Malenga and all them lot, and then. Like I had Lily Mercer, who's doing Vibe magazine, Morgan Keys, who's a music video yeah. that's looking after Western, like doing A and R, radio presenting. Um, Saskia Collins, who then went on to do Save the Children and other things. Georgia Lewis Anderson, who was the voice of Google and doing the Fox Problem. Aaron Bridgman, who's then gone to do presenting for Five Star and all that sort of stuff. Um, who else is there? Well, Jake Warren. Like I just what well, yeah, just there's a whole bunch of people that was that I I've had used SB as a stepping stone. So it wasn't just people used to just see the front the yeah. content I used to put up, but there was a team behind it and they was able to have a step up as well. How did you get people to invest in what you were doing in that way? Like it's so I mean, much. I think like it was physical. just very like early. It was exciting. It was just like 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 the videos I was making with people, like I remember I did the first UK interview with Drake, I did the first UK interview with Nicki Minaj, Wiz Khalifa, like I was early on Bruno Mars, Tori Kelly. How does like, that happen? How did how did you get the straight me? Interview? I was just like 
I was such like I was so just was that annoying. like an email were you emailing people yeah like- emailing turning up at places like D12 were in Shoreditch I turned up in Shoreditch I was like yo get my camera and voice the 5 nine was there he did a thing for me you so, just pull it up and be like bro yeah, are you man like, gonna yeah, do this just like and I just, just I was just on it like on it like part of me like I've lost that on it if yeah. I'm honest like but, but when I was business, younger yeah. I was just relentless yeah. like relentless like the emails that I find that I've been sending to PRs and and how I get their emails and like I remember doing Kelly Rowland and the MTV cameras are there and I was shook and I found Georgia the night before in Kilburn like she was my presenter and then she came the day after uni with the line piece of paper like we were just on it man like and it was for uh, for everyone else that worked for me it was the experience so if they couldn't maybe get a job or a foot in the door they've either gone on to create their own thing now or SBs allow them to go and do other stuff and I find that's really important as much as the people that I film on camera oh so you never had an assistant in the background you like just sent we, we, I mean the way yeah, we no, saw it before myself. you hadn't so you actually I remember emailing SB once and I think you actually replied to me like yourself and I was like Ra doesn't this guy have some like like official entity that's doing this for them yeah I've still got hundreds of thousands of emails <laughs> unanswered but like I've got I've got a potential show coming about that soon but um, yeah, it's like, yeah, that, that, I, um, yeah, it was just me, and I'm very, I'm control freak, innit, so when my, when I did get a PAEA, they was like, we're gonna look after emails, I'm like, nah, like, I'm doing my emails, and it's like, Jamal, how are you gonna scale up, da, 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 da. I've looked after my emails to this day, and, and that's a, that's a detriment to me, but it's also good in the same time. That you're like, connected. Yeah. Is that, and this is the 100% true because I sent you an email maybe I think two years ago maybe a year ago or two we were talking and you was like oh look, and I sent you an email and you're like to me oh bro I'm going to search for it so you typed my name in and I think you sent me you showed me an email I sent you in 2009 like oh my uh, name yeah, I, I was like, 2002, I was I like was. I'm Sully I'm trying to and yeah, I was yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. you're <laughs> sick there's so many emails I've got like that man that people that because you've blown now like do you know what I'm saying so it's like yeah, it's mad. It is mad. It is mad. Uh, so you must get people coming up to you all the time, like, bro, like this email, and you can't even pretend you don't know. Yeah, no, but I, I, because I've got all the emails on my phone, I just search for it, and then they see it's unopened. Oh. And it's like, so it's like, and then they see how many emails, like, that is there. Like, it's crazy. But yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, like, it's, it's something that's always, it's, it's something that if people have a, have a have a um like problem or a thing with me it's because of that oh. nothing else like i'm cool like just whatever but it's the emails and that's because i don't i don't let no one touch it in it so some people some people don't know that they like they think where's the team but i'm just, just like that no one it's me so that's why it's like difficult but like for example like i like i i, I speak to other people yeah. on like private emails who are quite well known and they've got another email. So that's what I've been thinking of doing. Of oh, having splitting like a, the two. Yeah, yeah, because then it might like, I'll be able to organise myself a little bit better. But at the moment, everything comes to one. So yeah, that must be stress. Yeah, bro. like I have all the submissions, all, all my personal ones. So you still deal with the submissions as well? A lot of, the, well, recently, no, nah, I've just I've fought the team. I've like delegated it to the team. Yeah. But um, back in the day, yeah, I used to deal that's with it. Smart. So at what point did it become the business like did you ever like raise money did you ever do like rounds like as any business like yeah do, so how so how did that process how much you want to talk about that process don't <laughs> <laughs> i'll talk about it a bit um give, give, so, let's yeah, give the man like some early, insight yeah you know i did an early 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 round um and i always say that's got you've got to make sure that you're um like you're like like you're um you go around your support network so the first early round was actually with my Mum's friend. Oh, serious? Yeah, so yeah, like you should never, like you should never like doubt the people that are around you, surrounded you in it. So it was my mum's friend, and yeah, like we did the whole investment round, which helped me put certain infrastructures in. Um, so yeah, I feel like every run, I'm just gonna add, keep adding it up. Like yeah. I'm doing something at the moment, like a whole, like a big thing at the moment, um, which will hopefully be finished soon. Yeah, and Got then the that that is like that's going to be next level. Because I feel like I've done that early infrastructure, which is like, I guess you'd call it like maybe a seed. Yeah, yeah, seed, And then, yeah. Um, like, 
which helped me get to a certain level. But now I'm gonna just take it to a whole nother level. So you've only um, ever so done a seed round for SB? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And crazy. then we just managed to just do Become brand profitable. partnerships and yeah. all that sort of stuff after that. Um, and it's not always been profit. Like some, some, sometimes make a loss, sometimes you break even. Um, but you always manage to stay afloat. Yeah. Like that's, the, that's the main important thing. Um, manage to pay our bills on time and all that stuff. Who's caught your attention? Sharma Dean Reed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> the one, yeah, yeah. She's on the oh, one portfolio gee. companies. Yeah, she's a real, she's yeah, a real, yeah, yeah she's a real yeah, hustler, yeah. boy. I when it comes to, to hustling, yeah. To go say hello. Yeah, Sharma's about that life, yeah, man. When yeah, it comes yeah. to hustling, yeah, 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 she's proper. Yeah, no, she um. So yeah, local global, one of the um, investors, or maybe the one of the index. Stack. Yeah, yeah, in early, yeah. Uh, so she's just in here. So I don't know what they're doing today, but yeah. Cool. But yeah, afterwards you can go and chat to her still. Yeah, yeah. And what I was gonna say, you completely took me <laughs> to your trade of Yeah, nah, nah, nah. So when we're talking about that whole um, idea of like, okay, SB, you raised early, yeah. Mm -hmm. You raise, you raise your first seed round. So, so you've never pitched to anyone then. You've just people have just seen the product yeah, and just invested I, I, in that's, it. That's, I'm very fortunate to be in that position. But I want to do the pitch and stuff, definitely. Yeah. For like with this next one that I'm doing, um, again, it's people that I know, like. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's like yeah, but I want to like I'm doing this. I think it's going to be the last one, and I want to do a major raise like, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like for like like hopefully take it to the next 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 level this one's just for this period now um for like the next couple of years three few years to like um just organize everything properly yeah. i'm involved in so many different things i can imagine they don't like sometimes they don't speak to each other i might be something doing here personally but then sb's talking to them on a different level so i'm just gonna organize it all yeah so that's what i'm doing now oh. i've been doing that so this conversation's been going on like it's like the last stages now where everything's getting moved around. Um, so yeah, that, that's been like a thing I've been working on for a little while. Dope. So so can you take us, before we wrap up, can you take us through the structure of the, how the business sound, that stands right now? What yeah, so like right at now? the moment, like I've got like the, the community charity side, which isn't really, uh, it's not for profit. Um, it's just to give back to the community yeah, yeah, because yeah, of yeah, what yeah, you've yeah. done, yeah. Um, I've got like my personal, then I've got like SB, then I have like a management record label side, and then I've got like consultancy side oh, as well. Oh, you had the label from, uh, you yeah, had the yeah, label yeah. for a while. I, well, I, I, when, when the Google advert came out, I, it was, I, I signed with RCA. I think I was the youngest like ever to have an imprint. Oh, we've got to talk about like, this, bro. So, so like, yeah, go on. I did that and then like. So they approached you and said, we want to give you an imprint. Yeah, because uh, I had a load of acts. Yeah. Like, I had loads of acts that, I was putting on early. So I did, I was at RCA for like two years and I learned a lot like about the music record industry. But I feel like when I see things now, it was way ahead of the, it was too, way- Too early. Yeah, too You had early. maxed out at the time, yeah, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It was way too early. Like, and the certain things that I was doing, I was thinking, whoa, how it is now, if I did it now, man. It'd be different, but yeah. I can never like, you never regret. Like, do you know what I'm saying? You always like, just got to adapt and maintain. Cause like people that are, like whether they're pioneering, whatever industry it is, you're always gonna get someone that's gonna come after and do it. And, and yeah, you and just gotta make sure you evolve. So I, I when I was at RCA, I did that, and um, yeah, I, I was given the freedom to sign what I wanted. But yeah, like looking back at it, I was way too young. What was your vision for that? What was your vision? I just for wanted the to sign acts that I put on because a lot of acts I was putting on SB and they was blowing, blowing up, up yeah. and I was like, oh, I'd love to like sign some of these people. Um, and I felt felt like the infrastructure at Sony could have allowed me allowed me to to do that um, to allow me to do that. But now what I do is I do distribution, so I will do singles. I'll oh. release singles and I'll like help out. So like I, I like helped out. I did the K Trap one. Oh, serious? Behind the scenes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that one. Uh, Morrison did that oh, one. Oh, so he's yeah. Um, he got so I did a few like. And even though it might videos might go on other platforms, we still done like, the, the, scenes, the yeah. infrastructure of behind it. And there was like certain other acts as well that that I did that I just liked that I just wanted to like just do singles with. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm most proud of uh, the K Trap one. That was sick. Yeah, that yeah, he, did, yeah. He, he did well. That's the one. His mask is off now though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but we did all what? we did the first mixtapes. Oh, so you've done the, f oh, so yeah, you, oh, so the you first actually couple of behind the scenes in yeah, helping yeah, yeah, him. Yeah, 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 See, that's yeah. interesting because a lot the, of people wouldn't know that. Yeah, and the directors as well. I, I find that I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, like, which is, I like, I like doing that. Like, because I, I very, before I very front facing. So like, even 
with the directors, like big up the directors, they're sick. I want to learn how to direct more, like get more into film. Cause I've always, when I've got videos, I've given it to directors. And that's why now you see me doing the, the Ed Sheeran and yeah. the Dave Pylondra and the Chelsea one. Cause I want to learn my skill now. Cause for the past 10, 13 years, I've always been in the mix of it where I've not been able to perfect my skill. So then like with certain directors, I've always tried to partner them up. So like when I first filmed Dave for his warm up. Yeah. I was like, yo, you need to work with this director, LX. Oh. So then he worked with LX and then he then went to go shoot on like loads of Dave's videos. Yeah, and fully. then again with Jay Huss, Lean and Bop, I put LX on that. And then oh. LX started directing all of those ones as well. So it's like different directors that I've worked with. Paul Whisper is another one. I put him on all the K-Trap ones and all that. So it's like, I... I, I yeah, believe so you're, you're moving people. the scene in ways that man ain't even aware of. Yeah, I just connect people. That's That's the... That's the the thing, and I don't, if you know, you know, if you don't, don't. It's like, I just build a relationship with the artists and the directors, innit? Yeah, I hear that yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with the last one, you said you had a consultancy firm, and yeah. I remember when I saw you, I saw you in Parliament, when you did a TED Talk time ago, mm. and you said you had a yoghurt company as one well. One of the most proudest ones, which I forgot, yeah. is the, because I want to big up Ratman and, and Simon Hawks. That was, again, another one. We did all the um, stuff around Anthony Nolan, um, domestic violence and mental health. Yeah, I remember suicide. those, yeah. So again, that was Simon, who I knew, Ratman, who I knew, and then put them together. And then that's now, he's now directing the, the show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I all see. Of that. So like all of that as well. Like, but you're patterning, you're patterning. Yeah, because I feel like there's, yeah. a, there's a bunch of directors that sometimes don't, um, don't get to work with like loads of artists and uh, and especially with the rap man one, I remember I was speaking to him and I was like, bro, Simon is sick, trust me. And then he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he 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 ended up using him. And I like oh. I I'm I learned from a guy called Ken Hurts that um it's about connecting people. Like Ken Hurts is like look, he's been like the um like Will Smith's family lawyer like for oh. years, Britney Spears, like all these massive guys. And I met him and he was just like, connecting people, you don't want anything in return, just connect people, like that's it. And I learned that from him. And I just, like any little bit I can just do, I'll, I'll do. Yeah, I, that's a, I think network, that's all that network you're saying. Network is a network, yeah, 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 yeah 100%. That, I, that's real talk, man. So yeah, so you've got, you wanna go into the consultancy firm, you said you yeah. had that as well. Yeah, that, that was just like for brands, if but, brands okay, wanted brands, yeah. like ideas or whatever, I was going and I like, consult them. Um, and I feel like I can build on that a lot more. Like now, less is more. I used to do so much stuff. Now I'm quite specific with what I do. Um, and yeah, like not not here, there and everywhere for the sake of sake of it. Back in the day, I was here, there and everywhere. Every event, like just long. So like, it's just tiring. So now like just little bits here and there. And, yeah. Work smarter instead of yeah, harder. Yeah, 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 work smarter. yeah. Yeah, yeah, work smarter instead of harder, sick. So outside those businesses, there other other investments that you've made that um, yeah, well, of. yeah, not like maybe not as much monetary value, but like, um, like you got like which was a frozen yogurt yeah, you were telling thing me. that I did in in up of north of England. It's not going now, but it was a good experience. Um, I'm like just trying to even my myself in other other stuff. Like I've got a thing in development at the moment with a production company, which will be specifically around business ideas and that. So I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to going back on all the old business ideas and seeing if I can. Um, bring them Back to the forefront. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so like, I've got like a few things that I'm working on at the moment around that. But yeah, other than that, it's been mainly like SB, really. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that's little, like the umbrella. Little, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. Cool, man. Um, to wrap up, we got asked the the the, the one and only question oh, in it. So this? the the question is like, how did it feel when you saw your first million? That's the question. <laughs> Oh man, got to keep working. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that, bro. Got to keep working. Like, whenever you make like from the from the first check to the first million or whatever, it's like the motivation to keep going. Because if you can do that, then imagine what you can do if you put more like, behind it. Put more behind it. Yeah, that's the perfect way to pronounce it. Um, to um, acknowledge it. So yeah, like, I think definitely it would be, um, it would be, wow. Like, I can't believe we've got this. Yeah. Um, let's keep going. Yeah. Right. So yeah, like, when I first got, when I first got loads of things or 
I, that's how I treat everything. Yeah. Like, when I got my first ring, like, I was like, all right, keep going. Like, I'm gonna get your first million, keep going. Yeah. I'm get your first 500, keep going. I'm gonna get your first pair of nice trainers, you keep going. I'm gonna get your first suit, you keep going. So I feel like that's, that's the, whatever accolades or things that people get, you just gotta keep going. It's just like, acknowledge it, cool. But keep going. Yeah, that's the true entrepreneurial mentality. You're never satisfied, innit? Self belief. Yeah, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, like, like the aim would be sick to create a multi-billion, like, like when I like I hate. I, oh, I don't really want to get into this, but yeah. I like in my head, in my head, don't really say it, but I'm just gonna say it. Yeah, like, I always think like, like Oprah was the first. Um, and I hate put like colour and things, but yeah. she was like the first black uh, billionaire. Billion. Yeah. Like I was like, who's the um, who's the black billionaire in, in the UK? Like, is, yeah. there, is there a first black billionaire? In the UK? I, I, I couldn't tell you. I know there's a couple in Nigeria. I know there's a couple around the world, but in the UK specifically, billionaire. Not that I can. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm aiming yeah. high. I'm aiming yeah. high, B. You so know that's the saying? race now. It's in the billy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, We're but I'm the, I don't. Billy. Do you know what? I don't like. This is why. I, this is why I never talk about that because I don't like. That's not my. Because I could open up a whole um, can of worms of that and be really focused on that. But mm. I don't want people. I don't, my brand doesn't really like that, and I don't want people to think that it's like that. But behind the scenes, I'm always like looking at things as like I find that interesting. Yeah. But I'm I'm happy. I'm content how I am now. Like. I'm like just bubbling over, doing my thing. I'm very comfortable, like it's cool. Um, but yeah, sometimes, like especially recently, I'm I've been like pushing myself a lot, a lot more, um, a lot more. So yeah, you'll see. Hopefully, even like the next couple of years, a few, a few, a few big things. Hey like, man, God yeah. willing, bro. I believe it. Fingers man. crossed. Self I believe it, man. Definitely. Jamal, my bro, appreciate Safe, the time. Nice I'm one, sure man. people are going to appreciate the information. Thank, thank you, you very thank much, you. Marcy. Thank you, man. Bless. Nice one, man. Bless.